Hey, on the drive part three. It is fucking freezing. Um, so yesterday I talked about the Trump carrier thing. Um, today I kind of wanted to talk about the Jill Stein recount. So Jill Stein, the person I voted for, actually, from the Green Party, has requested a recount and has raised a ton of money um, to get that recount instated. Personally, I think that's a good thing. I mean, it's a democracy. So at the end of the day, you want to know who wins, who's the winner, who's the actual winner. Not who cheated the best, not who jury-rigged the rules the best, but who actually won. So yeah, I think it's a good thing. Um, There's no loss in a vote count or recount for the vote. Um, I saw a little... <laughs> a little Trump propagandish people saying, um, oh, they're trying to steal the vote with a recount. It's a recount to get over. So, the other part to that is that recount doesn't go far enough. Well, there are significant issues um, with elections in this country. And the recount is not going to touch even a few of them. So, for example, the United States is the only nation that I know of, um, at least industrialized nation or first world nation, that actively tries to stop people from voting, or the state actively tries to stop. Paul Weyrich, uh, this was like back in the 80s or something, a Republican operative, made this point that he didn't want all people to vote. That is essentially that the chances of a Republican getting elected went down with the number of people who showed up to the polls to vote. Well, it seems that Republicans have internalized this, so at the end of the Voting Rights Act, essentially when the Supreme Court ripped it apart, one Republican legislature after another put in rules to essentially make it difficult for certain people to vote. Those people being primarily Democrats, and those people being primarily African Americans. I read a stat somewhere that said it was like, um, blacks were 900% more likely to have their vote either stripped or ignored. Um, And they're right. I mean, Florida, North Carolina, many of these places that Trump won by like 1% of the vote were stripping people off roads. I mean, even back during Bush versus Gore, um, there were like hundreds of thousands of African Americans that couldn't vote due to either being stripped off the rolls or um, given a provision to ballot that wasn't counted or it was just shenanigans. In some cases, they would make it longer. You know, they were shut polls down in certain areas, making it longer for those people to vote. So if you had to work that day, sad day for you. You're not voting that day. Or another one of the things would be um, this kind of cross-check system. They would look at the rolls and says, Bob Jones voted in Maryland. Well, yeah, but that's not the same Bob Jones that voting in Florida, and certainly they could be more than one Bob Jones. The systems were designed purely to strip people off the rolls. It had nothing to do with actual democracy. In fact, it was the opposite of democracy. So that's one thing. Um, The second thing has to do with the congressional level level of power itself. So, for instance, jury battery. The House, or the Congress itself, is ridiculously jury battered. What that means is they've gone in and they've changed the districts. So they've redrawn the districts to make it Republicans far safer based upon demographics of people who they think are going to vote for them. And consequently made Democrats in those areas a little bit safer. But it's a shitload more Republicans than Democrats. And in gerrymandering that way, you're ensuring that the House will stay Republican regardless of how batshit crazy those Republicans get. The people in those areas tend to just vote Republican. So, the House, for the most part, is staying Republican for the foreseeable future. Um, some of them were so egregious that the judge struck them down. They were, they were insane. They, there was no... There's no person that's objective that can look at that and say, Oh, that makes sense. Because it doesn't make sense. It's done purely for the... To get those people in office. So that's the second part. Um, the last part is a little bit more insidious. The media. So, voting is great, but voting depends upon a well-informed electorate. 
Meaning that the people who vote need to know what they're voting for. If you go to the polls, you have four people on the polls, but you don't know who the hell any of those people are or what those people did, then it doesn't really matter if you vote. Because you have no idea what the hell you're voting for. On the positive side, a lot of independent media um, has actually gotten pretty strong at trying to delve into the truth that essentially um, cared less about the propaganda aspect of it and more about well, what's real, what's genuine, what are the things that actually affect people. Like the Real News Network is a new network that started, the Young Turks. Um, i trying to think of another one. But my point is, many of the, those, many of the mainstream ones, so essentially like network news or, um, or um, cable news, they don't really tell you the things that you need in order to make informed decisions. And oftentimes, they do this false equivalency thing. So somebody would say, um, hey, how do we feel about Coke? One person says, I think Coke is the best product on the planet. And the other person says, no, no, I don't like it very much. I like Pepsi's better. And CNN ends it with, yeah, you decide. How the hell do I decide? I just heard two people give me two opposing viewpoints, and I have no clue what's the truth. The problem with the news is that it doesn't tell you the truth. It's not objective. Objective meaning, well, we've looked at the evidence. This is what we believe is more likely true than not. Giving you two opinions doesn't really tell you anything about those opinions. It's just two opinions. Essentially, me telling you something tells you nothing about the thing I'm telling you about. It tells you everything about me, my objective, my priorities. That's kind of what news does. It just says... This is what this group thinks that has a vested interest in thinking this way. And this is what the other group thinks that has a vested interest in thinking this way. You decide. The truth is, both sides could be lying to you. Both sides could be telling the truth. It could be somewhere in the middle. It gives you nothing for mainstream news to not give you information in regards to what's more likely to be true. That's my issue with mainstream news. It's more infotainment. They don't talk about the climate, even though climate scientists are screaming, you know, hair on fire. They're not talking about North Dakota Pipeline, even though they're literally taking federal land. News is owned by, I think, like six media organizations, and those organizations have huge amounts of corporate interests and make huge amounts of money off of presidential seasons and stuff like that. I mean, they spent billions of dollars this presidential season in advertisements. So, they have a vested interest in sticking with infotainment. There's a reason why presidential elections or debates sound like wrestling matches. They're, they're playing down policy. They're playing down things that actually affect people and playing up personalities. You know, this guy says, grab him by the pussy. This other guy said something about the other guy. Like, hey, Rand Paul said that you were crazy. Well, I mean, Rand Paul looks ridiculous. Why is that on a debate stage? Why are you talking about penis size on a debate stage? What's your policy? What's your policy? What are the things that are actually going to affect me and my family? And you know, those are the things that matter, and those are the things that they, for the most part, stay away from. So, yeah, we can't pretend that we have a functioning democracy when the things that make democracy work are essentially undermined in order to create an objective, like create a particular candidate, or to get a particular candidate in. I mean, look, I, I despise Trump. But if you notice, everybody lined up for Hillary. All of the networks, with the exception of Fox, um, most news articles, most all that stuff was, Trump's gonna win, Trump, I mean, Hillary's gonna win, Hillary's gonna win. Huffington Post had this ridiculous propaganda that Hillary had a 98% chance of winning. I have no fucking clue what they were smoking. Hillary had never had a 98% chance of winning. In fact, I was betting at the beginning of the primary that she was going to lose. Towards the middle of the primary, I thought, ugh, he's so damaged. There's no way. Even though people greatly disliked her, there's no fucking way he can win. And then as it went on, and I started looking at the polls, I'm like, well, yeah, he can win. And media, for the most part, is pretending that it's a lock. It's full of it. So, that's my spill for the fry. I need, I need coffee. Um, but that's the point. 
yes, three count is great, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a functioning democracy that allows people to actually choose who they want, the problem is not democracy. If you need to curtail the vote, or if you need to shut down polls, if you need to throw people off the roads, if you need to add these ridiculous voter ID laws that has nothing to do with reality, then something's wrong with you. Something's not wrong with you know, the process itself. The process doesn't need to be tweaked. Your views need to be tweaked. You're trying to get into power for stuff that you know is unpopular. So, that's kind of the point. You can't call it a functioning democracy if the things that make it a functioning democracy does not work, or at the very least, are being tweaked or curtailed um, to change your perspective or to change the end result. Alright guys, have a good day.